Uh, if you have a look at this thing in advance, which I hope most of you look at, um, we're doing some cons consolidation stuff tonight. So I've jotted the three subjects down here. Uh, I'm going to attempt to improve the consolidatory stuff. Um, in the past, I've just kind of said any questions and everyone's been quiet and not there's anything wrong with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk at you until you give me questions. Uh, so I'll try to force the issue. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little, maybe five minutes or so on each thing. Unless anyone has any burning questions at this stage. Does anyone have anything they want to ask that they really didn't understand about these three things? Or do you want me to go first? Go first? Okay. okay. First. Um, what, I will, uh, what I have done in the hands is I put these listed about. So it's as if it's a random set of hands, but I forced certain things to happen in them. But it's not a case of it's this thing eight times in a row, which it can be when we do one specific mm -hmm. subject. Like the slam one, for example, it's just your slam, ah, slam, your slam, ah, slam, your slam, oh, we didn't have a slam, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So this will be more, it will feel more random, but I have had something to do with it on some of okay? So, uh, RKCB stands for Roman Keycard Blackwood. That's me being lazy um, and not writing Roman Keycard Blackwood out. So, simply put, Roman Keycard Blackwood, once you agree to suit, uh, once you agree to suit, four no trumps ask for aces and the king of trumps. Now, here you could argue I haven't agreed to suit. It's important to remember that four no trumps after any natural suit bid, it is assumed that that suit is trumps. So if the auction was one spade four no trumps, not that it ought to be, you ought to be able to do something better than just take a ballroom here. Um, one spade four no trumps says, I'm interested in this slam, talk to me about your aces and the king of trumps. So the king of trumps becomes an ace. Yeah. Or another way of thinking about it is you now have five key cards. That's where key card comes from, because the king of trumps is a key card. So the response is, five clubs, five diamonds, five hearts, and five spades are what? Can anyone tell me what five clubs is? How many key cards have you got for five clubs? No, 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 one or three. Yeah. One or four. One or four. Two and five. five. Two. Two five. Two or five. Two five plus. Two or five plus the queen. Plus queen. queen. Which queen? Queen of trumps. Queen of trumps. trumps. <coughs> Why are they split? Why is it none or three? One or four? To make our lives difficult? Um, because you've got so, so much in your hand. Mm -hmm. So South will have some, won't they? We would imagine. It's unlikely South is slamming without any aces or the king of trumps. <laughs> but why, why have we made it so that we are in theory unsure about whether it is zero or three? Why wasn't that zero, that one, that two, and so on and so forth? Was it space? Space. Right. Yeah. If we would like it that it would go zero, one, two, three, four, five nice and in, in, in a linear line. The problem is you end up at the sixth level by the time you've finished your responses. So we have to split them like this to allow five no trumps to come back and ask for kings. Need five no trumps available to the responder. It needs to be possible. Well, I suppose need is a strong one. We would very much like it to be possible to ask for kings. So you ask for key cards and essentially the king of trumps is upgraded in place. Nothing really changes about the theory of slam bidding. You still want 30-ish points to look for a suit slam. Um, but now there is essentially a fifth ace. So what key card is trying to stop you from doing is going for a slam, missing an ace and the king of trumps. That's the idea. Okay? All happy with that? 30-ish mm -hmm. points for a suit slam, 33-ish for a no trump slam. But again, I say ish to get me out of the time where you go on Wednesday afternoon. We only had 24 and we made a slam. Because you can make slams on very, very few points if you have massive shape. Uh -huh. You can make it on five yeah, you can. if you've got ridiculous shape. Um, right, what should we do next? Uh, defence to opening no trump. So, um, last week we had a look at when the baddies open a no trump, what our bids mean. So, before last week, I would have had a very easy time. I would have gone natural. Done. However, I sacrificed the two minor suit bids for systematic bids. <coughs> so these major bids here, they're still natural. So two hearts over one no trump is natural, two spades 
is natural, because we want away bidding our majors. When I say natural, what have we got for that bid exactly? Two hearts or two spades? Number of cards? Oh, oh. Five or more. And... Ten plus points. Ten plus points. Five plus ten plus. You get the idea. Uh, okay. There is actually a hidden limit to this overcall. Normally when we talk about an overcall, it's ten plus. There's a hidden limit here because if we had 16 or more points, what would we do instead of all this? Double. 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 So this in theory is actually 10 to 15 if you want to be very specific. Because with 16 or more, you should be doubling rather than bidding your suit because it's more likely to generate a good score. So strictly speaking, it's 10 to 15. Strictly speaking. You should double on all 16s regardless of your shape. Obviously, the more shapely you are, you might want you to declare later, but you should still double first to get across your strength. Now, two clubs and two diamonds, I, I change them from being natural, mainly because they're not very useful as a natural bit. There, aren't hand, there, there are some hands where you would like two clubs to be natural, but you tend to find that they can bid over you anyway. So we sacrifice the minor bids to get more major suits in. So, what does two clubs say after a no trump? Hearts. 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 And, another. Another. and therefore Diamond says <laughs> Okay, so extrapolating on those ideas What's the minimum shape for this hearts and another space and another business? Five, five four. four You can be five, five Six, six, five, six, four. You can't be four, four, because you haven't got a five-card suit then. Uh, anything else? What other things do you need? You five, four. What else? Points? Do we need any? Ten-ish. Yeah, ten-ish. If you, you, you know, the more shape you've got, you can ish it. You know, maybe eight if you're five, five. That kind of jazz. But ten plus is is where we'd like to sit. Again, I suppose we've got the same thing as before. It's ten to fifteen because we're sixteen in doubling. That's about all there is. You would like decent suits, so I'll put decent suits in there. <coughs> you like overcalling suits, you know, not suits that are headed by the seven. You want proper suits. Um, and that's about all there is to it. Now, that makes it very easy. It's the respondent job that actually becomes quite complicated. Um, when you anchor to a major, here you're showing hearts, here you're showing spades, it's very easy for a respondent when they have a fit. If they have a fit for that major, you just bid whatever seems sensible. Two of it if you're weak, three of it if you're rotational, four if you think game's on. Pretty straightforward. For example, if partner was to bid two clubs and we had some kind of hand that really liked hearts. If I partner bids two clubs showing hearts and another suit, I hope you would all just bid game with this hand. Because you've got a heart fit, you've, you've got enough for game relatively. You can treat it very similar to an opening hand because they have in a sense got an opening hand just about. They've got 5-4 with at least 10 points. So it's very close to an opening hand style. So you can, you can respond accordingly because they've in a sense opened that major. The reason Aspro is so good is because it mentions the major first. So if there are any major fits you find them very quickly. And that helps you a lot in the bidding, especially if the bidding gets competitive. So if you have a major fit, it's fairly straightforward, bid instinctively. If you don't have a major fit, so I'll turn, turn those round. Oops, I should re the same thing. <laughs> um, if I turn the uh, rounded suits around, that's funny. Now if our partner is two clubs showing hearts and another suit, we're not keen on hearts. So you need to be playing in whatever their five card suit is. I mean, it might be hearts and spades. Hopefully it's hearts and a minor, but we're not sure. But the fact that we now don't have a major fit means we have a slight problem in our bidding. The problem is that we can't just bid game because we don't know where the correct game is. I suppose with this many points, to be honest, you could, you could just take a flyer at three no trumps. That wouldn't seem unreasonable. Um, I'd probably have to reduce it a bit and make it a bit worse. Otherwise, three no trumps is right. Um, I suppose as a little caveat, I should say, if you don't have a fit and you don't think you can make three no trumps, I suppose. Um, so our partner has hearts and another suit. We need to play in their five card suit. Remember, if our partner had hearts and spades, 
they would have anchored to their shorter suit. So if they've shown hearts, they will have five spades if spades is ever a suit. Basically, we need to play in their five card suit. If it's five there, we'll play there. Not happily, but we'll play there. If it's five here, we'll play here. If it's five here, we'll play here. And if it's five here, we'll play here. So wherever their five card <coughs> suit is, that is where we need to play. So to ask them, you do what? One step up. One step up. In this case, two diamonds. And it just says, tell me, what's your five card suit? That implies a dislike for their anchored suit. Their anchored suit is the suit that they are actually showing. Okay? So, simplistically, Aspro is if you've got a fit, great, bid whatever seems sensible. If you haven't got a fit, you've got a fish. <laughs> and the fish is always the bid above. Occasionally, you have to fish twice if you really don't like their second deck. If they say they've got a five card suit and you don't like that either, because you've got one of them and whatever, you have to fish again, which is the suit above again. Okay? The idea behind Aspro is not to give you headaches like this, it's to try to get you in a major contract more frequently as overcallers. There are times where you would have been a minor as an overcaller and missed your major fit, and that's what Aspro is trying to catch. Okay? Happy? Yeah? Yes? I'm still a bit confused. Okay. The two two, two, okay. Clubs, two diamonds. Can I remove that? You got yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two clubs, two diamonds, and then I would say two hearts to say that. Um, that's, that's it. And then the, the, the one that comes back to no trunks. What's he actually saying? Two no trunks is a bit vague there because that isn't the step up. Two no trunks is normally forcing. Well, after the spade bid, is it? After the spade bid, it's asking for the second suit. After okay. the heart bid, it's just a generic force. Okay, so after the, after the spade bid, what would it actually be? So if it was to go two diamonds, which is spades and another. Hello. Two diamonds, two hearts, two spades, two no trunks. Two yeah. hearts, what's your five card suit? Two, two spades, it's spades, I just told you, plunker. Two no trumps. <laughs> what's your other one? Yeah. Is what that says. Okay. And they'll have any points? It's not really about the points, it's more about the shape. It's just the shape. Yeah, yeah. That, that says, what's your five card suit? It's spades. That says, oh no, I was <laughs> dreading that, please tell me more. Right. So they could have any number of points in theory. They could have a void in spades and be four, four, five, for example. Just desperate to play in anything but the spades. So it's kind of, it can be a rescue. Yeah, in a sense it often is a rescue. Um, this essentially is, that's the relay saying what's your five, that's the relay saying what's your four. Yeah. So it's just, it's just all, all fishing really. And they'll do whatever their four card suit is. Interestingly enough, they won't have four hearts. Because if they have four hearts, they would have anchored to hearts. Mm -hmm. So they will have a minor. Mm -hmm. uh, three diamonds, let's say. Okay? Yeah. Right, um, last one, signals in defence. So I look at some card play stuff. Now I got a little bit, not worried, what is the word? Apprehensive? I don't know. I got a little bit worried when I thought about um, teaching you signals when I, when I very first touched on a subject a while ago. I talked about health, high encouraging, low discouraging. And then when I revisited signals a few weeks ago, I told you that I personally prefer low encouraging, high discouraging reason so you don't have to throw a big one to say leave me these. Throw a small one to say leave me these. It seems to make more logical sense to me. Now the problem with that is changing a signalling system means you have to be on, on the ball all the time. So I want to sort of slightly say it's up to you what your signalling system is but it's you and your partner that need to agree something. It doesn't matter if you agree that a three is always encouraging and a four isn't. It, whatever you agree is fine as long as you agree something. It's better to have a good agreement and know what you're doing than to have what you think is the best system and not understand it. So I'm, I felt like I semi-made you do reverse attitude when I did it and I didn't want to make you do that. I want you to do whatever you're comfortable with but my personal preference is reverse attitude. Okay. So when I'm, when I'm talking on the board, I have to have a system, otherwise I can't say, well, I'd play the two if this system, I'd play the three if this system, because it gets very wordy. Okay? So I'll give you an example of some kind of signaling. <coughs> Lava. Uh, Okay, 
So, um, the bidding goes something along the lines of one no truck from east, two clubs from west, stay many things, two diamonds, I haven't got a four card major, shrug, three no trumps. Okay? So essentially they're in three no trumps. Our partner leads are two of clubs. Now one thing about signals in defence is it is a branch of the tree of defence. So defence, you, you clue together a lot of things, you listen to the bidding, you listen to your partner's initial lead, you listen, listen to their signals, they listen to your signals. There's a lot going on. So when I focus in on one particular aspect, I'm kind of assuming everything else is easy. It isn't, because you've got all sorts to think about. Anyway, our partner leads a club. So what do you think about the two of clubs lead? Tell me what you think. Depending which one you like. Yeah, so leads is different to signals. I've never, I hope, told you anything different about leads. Low is like, high is hate when you lead. Simple as that. So <coughs> low, which is the two, that's a pretty low card, that would suggest they've got good clubs. What do you tend to lead when you're leading against no trumps? Four. 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 Fourth highest. Yes. So how many clubs has your partner got? Four. 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 Why don't they have five? Because they're the two. 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 There's nothing smaller than a two. So therefore, that for me would suggest that they have exactly four clubs. They might have let their fifth down because they forgot you did fourth highest and they wanted to make it clear you've got an honour. You tend to find they tell the truth. The key is that they've got long, longish clubs and they like the fact that they've got some clubs. They like their club suit, if you like. Okay, so they've got some honour of some description. Okay, so it's a very good thing to do as a defender. Just have a little think, especially in the opening lead, because they should be trying to tell you something. All right. So this club gets played small. Dummies clubs are irrelevant. You play the jack because third hand plays nine. Declare wins the queen. Okay. Nothing exciting going on so far. All that I'm thinking is that we would really, really like a heart through the dummy. If our partner gains the lead, we want a heart, don't we? That's the only thing that we really want to do at all, if anything. So, Declare plays a baby diamond. Our partner plays something low. Don't forget, you don't signal on Declarer's lead, because it's Declarer that's interested, not your partner. Only signal on your own leads. You can signal for count, but I'll look at that. Play the queen. That plays low. Low to the ten. And jack. Your partner plays low. Declarer plays the king of diamonds. Your partner wins the ace. Okay, first question. Why didn't our partner play their ace of diamonds earlier? Because there's only face cards. Because they haven't, well, when they play the diamond low, they should play second hand low. So that's fine, isn't it? When the diamond came back to the jack, why do you think they were ducking? Because the king's still out. Because the king's still out. They're basically trying to make declarers like awkward. They're trying to make it awkward, aren't they? Um, you would, we would have played the king of diamonds or the queen of diamonds if we had it. So the south should know everything about these diamonds, i.e. they've got all the goodies, basically. The good thing about what our partner has done is it has allowed them, it allowed us rather, to make a discard now. It has allowed us on this third round of diamonds, dummy's got to discard something, they're going to throw a small club because their clubs are useless. We now can discard something on this third round of diamonds. So when you're thinking about signals and discards, the very important cards are the opening lead, the signal on the opening lead, and the very first discard. They're the three times to really focus as a defender. If you don't remember your partner's fourth discard, that probably won't matter, probably. If you remember their first discard, that is the key. That's the first time they get to tell you something about their hand. Now, they might not want to say anything, but in this instance, we do want to say something. So we would like to, what? What do we want? We want a heart, okay? So we would like to encourage our partner to lead a heart. So we have two options. We can either discourage spades, and therefore hope they work out, we must want a heart, or encourage hearts. Now again, it depends on your signalling methods here, whether low is encouraging or high is encouraging or whatever. If you are playing low is encouraging, you could throw the three, which would say I want a heart, or you could alternatively throw a high spade, says I don't want a spade. You can be clever. <coughs> if you're playing held, you could do the opposite, throw a high heart, say I like a heart, a low spade, say I don't want a spade. In this example, of our I didn't mean to set it up like this, but it, it goes to show you how hell can be costly. Because if you to encourage hearts, you'd have to throw the ten, which is a trick set over the king jack. You've got queen ten pinning the king jack. So, if if you were playing held, high encouraging, I would throw a low spade 
to try and discourage them from playing space, which means they don't have to fall on the hearts. Okay? They might continue clubs, they might have I mean it feels unlikely. Now are these King Jeffrey clubs? No, we have the Jeffrey clubs. Are these King Jeffrey clubs? Probably not. Probably not. Um, anyway, whatever your signaling method, I think you need to get your partner to lead a heart. So my personal choice, given that I'm playing reverse attitude, is I would throw a high spade, which says, please don't leave me a spade. That's what my signaling method is. It's up to you if you play differently. So therefore, if my partner has worked out, let's say their hand is something like king, x, x of clubs, um, They might have something like that. So they've led a baby club, they've got in with their ace of diamonds, now they need to play something. Now whatever we do here, we're not actually going to take the contract off because we simply haven't got enough points between us. But if your partner plays a spade, declare is in and they're cashing all their diamonds then. If your partner plays a club, is in to declare as ace ten of clubs, which you don't want them to do. If your partner plays a heart, that's a very good thing for you, because it pinces the dummy's hearts. So this, this, oh, I appreciate I set it up, I have to set the hooks on the board. Um, this point right here is very important as a, de as a defender. If you give declare the lead back, that is an advantage for them, because they never have to tackle the heart suit until right at the very end. Whereas if you lead a heart through the dummy now, you could then lead the club back to your partner knowing that they have an honour in that suit. And the defence goes much nicer if you go heart through, club through. You try to, if you can, lead towards your partner's goodies because it means you trap something rather than leading your own goodies. All right? So the defence now should go low heart. Declarer will sweat a bit because they haven't got anything in hearts. They could try the king, the jack, or the knight. It's up to them. None of them is going to work. Uh, let's say the jack. You win the queen. Now you don't want to play hearts from your hand. Because you want to play the hearts through the dummy again. So you need to get your partner on lead. So again, all of the defences built together. Your discard got them to lead a heart. Their opening lead should convince you to lead a club back to them. Okay, so all, all this information stacks upon one another. So I've lead a club back. Declarer has now got a choice between the ace or the ten. If Declarer is also awake, they will know that the king of clubs is here. Because you could play the king of clubs on trick one if you had it. Also, uh, they led a low one saying they liked it and they didn't have the jack, the ten, the ace or the queen. So. Um, whatever declarer does now, you're bound to build a club trick. Of course, declarer can take the ace of clubs and they're in with their diamonds. But it's still the correct defence because what you're doing is not letting declarer have something they don't deserve. Alright? I could speak for ages and ages about all these hands and discards and 18 different bits of information you can pick up on. The key is, when you get a chance to discard and when you get a chance to signal, as a defender you should do so, because it's a good way of communicating with one another. Alright? So is this something that would be written on the card, or would you just confirm it more when you start playing? Um, it is written on the card. On there, find one. On it says here, leads, that's standard, we play normal leads. Discards and signals. So what I suggest, what, what you can do, is you can play discards is X and signals are Y, but then you get confused. Well, I, I find that confusing. So if you just play the same system, if you signal, which is following suit, or discard, which is not following suit, <coughs> the same theory applies, low is Y, high is H, or vice versa. So you would write it there, you'd say standard leads, held, held, or reverse held, reverse held, or whatever you play. Yeah. It's because you have to tell the opponents the system you use. You don't have to tell the truth with the card, you have to tell the truth with the card. Okay. Right, is there any questions on all that, Jazz? Roman key card. Uh, why does the high, the high card start? <laughs> yeah, um, it's all well and good when I put the hands on the board because I give yeah. me cards that help me. I give me the seven so I can say no, or the two so I can say yes. Um, you tend to find that it happens less frequently than you might think that you have the wrong cards. A high card for me starts around the six mark. I mean, two, three, four, five is the low, I know. two, three, four, five is the lowest, the lowest four. Six, seven, eight, nine are the highest, and then above that you're starting to get into honours. So I would say six, seven, eight, nine are high, but six is pretty vague and five is pretty vague. They're in, they're quite grey. The nearer them to the middle you get, you think it's quite grey. Um, of course, it's possible your suit is eight, nine, ten, and that's it. So eight is your lowest. 
that can happen, but not as often as you might think. Um, but I would say seven and above is, is definitely high. Six is iffy. Okay. Yes. Um, let's say you're defending against a, a low-level uh, suit contract, mm -hmm. and uh, so your your partner has quite a bit of strength. Mm -hmm. Say has the ace and the king, and they start off with the ace. Mm -hmm. You have a double turn. You would hope to start uh, roughing the third round. Yes. How do you draw? How do you signal to them? Signal those. So you encourage. Basically, so you have two basically to rough. Yeah. It's order. Exactly. You, you, you do. You do. You encourage whatever your encouragement is. So if low is encouraging, you play low. Tell so me to keep going. If you have high is encouraging, you play a high swap first. Whatever is the most encouraging thing you can do. So the first. That matters. The, the first answer. card. Yeah. So. One of the most important times to signal is when they leave the ace, because they they have the king, so they need to know what's going on in that suit. So if they leave, let's say you're in two hearts, and leave, they leave the ace, and there's three babies in the dummy, and you've got the nine and the three, let's say. Again, I've made it easy for myself. I'll give myself a big one and a small one, so I can do whatever I want. It could be that you have the nine and the eight. That'd be a pain, because then you can't load to encourage. But it'd be good if I was encouraging. Whatever you do with your signaling system, you need to try to encourage when you've got shortage. Right. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, doing the eight and the nine, your partner would have to watch the, the, the second. Watch very carefully. The yes. second signal yes. as well, that it was in that order. Yes. Obviously, so which you drop the first, first the small one. Obviously, yeah, exactly. So it is plausible. You, have, the fewer and fewer cards you get, the more and more restricted you are. It's plausible that eight is the smallest, but I would prefer it if it was something like that. Yeah. And the three is definitely very encouraging yeah. if you're playing that way. Yeah. Um, you need to make sure that as a person seeing is a positive signal for your partner, it doesn't necessarily mean they're promising the queen. They might be promising shortage. So if they encourage you to continue, don't assume they've got the queen and underlead your king, because then you don't make any tricks. You've got to go ace then king, just in case they're doing this. Okay? But encourage, basically. Alright? Okay? Right. Um,